Hi there, and welcome back to the Mindset Check Podcast. I'm your host, Misha McKittrick. This is a podcast where we believe that taking just a minute to evaluate your mindset allows you to have more power in your life than you think you do. One thing I wanted to already start with today is just um, gratitude. I just wanted to thank you for reaching out to me and letting me know the ways that this podcast is allowing you to have your own breakthroughs and people already reaching to me and giving me that feedback. It really contributes to my strength and my courage to continue to share this story. So thank you so much. Today, we are going to start in the journal entry, March 19th, 1994. Yesterday, we went to Salt Lake and back in one day to pick up a copier for Paul. We also got a recliner that they'll deliver on Wednesday and a neat lamp. Yay. Today, we're leaving for Cedar and today we have two baby showers. We are going to stay the whole weekend with my parents. And Monday, we're taking our car to St. George to have it looked at. Five more days and this baby is out. I hope. I can't wait to see its little face. Last night on the way home, Jesse swore he felt its fingers and said, Misha, feel right here. I felt all the way down its arm, its elbow, then its forearm. And look, here's her finger. He's so excited. Okay, let's jump to the next entry and just read through that one as well. March 23rd, 1994. We went to the doctor today. Tomorrow's my due date and still nothing's happened. Last Saturday, we had two baby showers. We took back things we didn't need and bought everything we needed. So we're all set, but no baby. I wish it would speed up. Our car? Well, that's in my head too. The guy that looked at it made no sense. So all that we ended up getting was a service job. <laughs> well, our chair is here and it's very comfortable. Something about Jesse has changed. He's helping me out a lot more. And we haven't fought like we used to. And I think he's cutting down on smoking too. I don't know what's gotten into him or who talked to him. But it's done a lot of good. He makes me feel better than he used to, just by the things he says and does. He has made me happier. Gina also wrote me a letter today and boosted my self-confidence. I feel so much better. I love the feedback of our chair is comfortable. <laughs> right in the middle of all of this other stuff. I just think that's so funny. Uh, as I look back at some of this entry, of these two entries, and just going back in time to this, all of this that happened, I can remember the letter that Jesse's sister wrote me, Gina. I don't have it. I don't know. I don't know if I have it in, I don't know, tucked away in a box somewhere. But I remember, I remember that that letter said, I, I remember that it was a really positive and encouraging letter. The one thing that I remember that it did say is that a baby changes everything and, and kind of like maybe, maybe just through our talks or maybe what she could observe. Maybe she kind of just knew that I needed that encouragement, but yeah, I remember that. And I remember, <laughs> I remember, I don't know. I don't think that that's true. <laughs> I don't think that a baby changes everything necessarily for the positive. I think that in some circumstances it can. And I was seeing evidence of him, um, just the way he was being, obviously. And I think it can. I think it definitely can. I think it just allow. It just depends on what we allow those big shifts in our life to bring into our mindset. And if we allow ourselves to sit inside the space of what is it that I want for in this circumstance for this baby and, and me as a, as a dad and my future and that type of thing. I remember the excitement. 
I remember getting all things set, all the baby showers. I remember it feeling pretty natural for me as a girl. And yes, I was young, but I can remember it feeling very natural for me to, to scoot into this role of, you know, I played house my whole life and loved to babysit. I loved all of that stuff. And so sliding into this role, like, I remember feeling a lot of fulfillment from just taking care and nurturing and that type of thing. One of the questions that I'm sure that many of you have is how did her parents allow this to happen? How did her parents allow her as a 15 year old girl to get married? And so today I wanted to talk about that. I want to just kind of address that and break that down and, and talk with you about things that I've talked to my parents about as an adult now and different insights that they had that they, that they kind of showed me and taught me. When we first got pregnant and my parents were kind of up against this news, knowing that we wanted to get married, you know, because in the conversation where that very first night we moved into what's right for this baby. And like I said before, I knew that I wanted to keep this baby. And my parents were very supportive of that. But I remember a little bit more hesitation around us getting married. And they didn't shoot anything down right away. They just, they just let there be space to explore options. And I know that they were in a really hard situation. Because later, I've even asked my mom, like, Mom... I just, I feel like that in our age today, in our generation, that there's so much more, um, you know, people getting in trouble for things of this nature, really like legally. And I remember asking my mom recently in recent years, just saying, Hey mom, what's your take? Like, did you, did it even cross your mind? Like, you know, Jesse's 18 and Misha was 14 at the time. My goodness. You know, keeping in mind, I, I did turn 15 a month after I got pregnant. Maybe that story can be some sometimes confusing because of that 14 and 15 um, saddle, but it just happened so quickly that I had my birthday. And I remember my mom's response, you know, in talking about, yeah, we knew we could, we could sue him for statutory rape, right? And she said, but we also knew that we were making a choice that this was the dad of our grandbaby. And they really thought about that. And so that's kind of a fast forward in time, going back to what actually happened in the time. Um, and so now I understand, of course, in the future, that that's what my parents were thinking of during this time. Like, what should their actions be? And should they allow me to marry this guy? You know, I came from a family that, you know, we had rules of not even dating until we were 16 and so forth. And Jesse was very um, persuasive. And he got to know my parents and he spoke to them and he asked them to sort of make exceptions to the rules before we were pregnant when we were just dating we traveled to go see his sister together alone together right no parents my older sister went with us but yeah so in my mind sometimes I still go back to that time and I'm like how did he convince them to allow that so that's kind of a little bit of background. Now, as my parents were trying to choose about this marriage and what they should do, I know that they were in a lot of turmoil. 
And my dad suggested that both families, my parents, sisters, and his mom and stepdad and sister and niece, that we all go camping for one weekend to talk about options. And I'm sure knowing what I've learned about my dad to allow my dad time to just kind of be in an environment where he could think and ponder about what he should do. And my dad told me the story that while we were on that camping trip, he left to go get ice or something. He went to go make a run. And we were camping near a lake and it was kind of by a little mountain freeway. And my dad went up to that freeway to get where he was going. And as he was driving down that freeway, he had the windows down and all of the fresh mountain air was just spilling in the windows. And he was blaring some music, which he was very known for. <laughs> he loved music. He was like a, a DJ at heart. I mean, he even did DJ some things. But he was playing this music and a song came on and it sank deep into his heart. And that song was Papa Don't Preach by Madonna. And when the song was blaring, he felt hot tears on his cheeks. And the overwhelming feeling that he needed to let me lead out in this decision. There was an understanding that he gained in between those lyrics that allowed him to see that I needed to look back on my life knowing that I made my decisions instead of having them made for me. Go with me to those lyrics for a minute. Papa, don't preach. I'm in trouble deep. Papa, don't preach. I've been losing sleep. And I've made up my mind. I'm keeping my baby. Even the, the lyrics that start to go on into Papa, he said, he's going to marry me and we can raise a little family. Right? All of that was just pouring and sinking down into his heart. And it allowed him this space. It allowed him the space to look at what the future was. And I know that what mattered for my dad when I got pregnant was not that I had ruined my life or his life. Uh-uh. I know that he saw a much bigger picture. What he saw was that this would be a small moment in time and the way he could be inside of what was happening would make such a huge difference. He saw an opportunity for me to become more than I was because of the challenges that were in front of both of us, right? In front of me, but that he could walk me through and help me with. My mom, in the same conversation we were having about, you know, pursuing Jesse legally. She told me, Mish, I never in my mind thought that you would ever, that it would be a marriage that ever lasted. Like I supported you like that, but I, I never really thought it would be. It's interesting how they allowed that knowing <laughs> all the cards are stacked against you. And this is probably going to be like a house of cards and fall. But that they still allowed me the space to learn and to grow. To be the one that was responsible for my choices and my decisions. They were insanely good <laughs> at allowing me to make my choices but talking to me a lot. So my dad always referred to me as what was called an emancipated adult. <laughs> he said it meant that I accept most adult responsibilities before becoming an adult. He said that it was 
that it meant that I was making big time decisions. And he would use these little quotations, big time decisions. And when my dad referred to me like this, when he talked about me like this as an emancipated adult, he did it so kind and loving. Like he knew that I could find the own, the answers that I needed, that they were already inside me. And he gave me confidence that I needed to make these hard decisions in front of me. And then he would listen and he would just sit back and support my choices. He put so much trust in me and that contributed to me thinking that same thing of myself. My dad taught me something really cool that I call the basketball analogy. He said the natural progression of a parent is when you sit down on the floor and say you, you sit out on the floor and you start rolling the ball back and forth with your kids. And, and that's kind of where it all starts. And then as a parent, you start teaching them to bounce the ball. And you lift them up really, really high so they can make that basket. And then the parent plays with them side by side. Dribbling. And, and playing and, and making baskets in the whole, the whole game. And then the next stage that they move into is being their coach. And in this stage, parents describe how they see the game. They teach their kids detailed plays and they give them overall advice on how to improve. My dad explained to me that the next stage is the one that I would be assuming. And that would be where he is moving into the stands and becoming a fan. He said that when parents are in the stands, they can no longer just walk up to their kids and coach them. He said that when you're in the stands, you have to wait for your kids to come off the court to talk with you. To give your advice, you have to be asked by your kids. And he talked to me about how that might not seem natural for me because I skipped some parts of the analogy, right? A lot of the coaching years. But he said that he would always be in the stands cheering for me. And that I could come to him any time that I needed advice. Through my dad's communication, I learned that sometimes the wisest choice I could make out on the court is to ask my dad to meet me in the locker room so that I could ask his advice on the choice that was in front of me. My dad was so wise in the way that he allowed me to make my own decisions as an emancipated adult while still teaching me to come for his advice. And this was his way of leading out with wisdom, of still being able to be my parent while he was also allowing me to slip into the role of a confident adult. You can hear it in my words in my journal. You can hear it that I'm still very much trying to figure out the world and developing. And I have someone in my corner. <laughs> pouring confidence into me. I know without any doubt that my path, you know, was like the two paths in the wilderness. And it definitely could have turned out a different way. But having people that believe in you in your corner is everything. Especially in extremely vulnerable moments. There's a quote by Ham Gino that I love. And it says, treat a child as though she already is the person she's capable of becoming. There might not be anything more true or fitting for the way that my, my dad 
both of my parents and my dad, helped me mold, helped me figure out the future that lay ahead, ahead of me, what was in front of me. And so my friends, this is what I give to you in helping you see that it's in what seems to be very unimportant decisions that we make that impact us the most. The way that we communicate with our loved ones can lift and empower and even alter the course of their life. We have more power than we think we do. Because our stories help others, we've asked you to share yours. I can't tell you how getting things from you guys and helping me understand what you are getting from me sharing is doing for me. It is so rejuvenating, refreshing, encouraging. And I know that having us and this little part of this podcast share your story helps others. So please, if you have insights or breakthroughs or anything that helped you move through your day because of the things we talk about on the podcast, I would love it if you would share. I can keep your name anonymous or it can be public, whatever you prefer. Send your thoughts in an email to hello at my friend Nisha.com or DM me on Instagram at my friend Misha. And my name is spelled M E S H A, Misha. And then we'll take a minute on our upcoming podcast to share your story and how you're learning and growing in your own life, even though it's crazy different than the life of a 15 year old pregnant girl, how you're having breakthroughs because of that because of that short story being shared. Also, this podcast can grow with your help. If you loved this episode or any of the episodes in the past, I would encourage you to share it. Share it with a friend, share it on Instagram, anywhere that feels fitting for you. I would love that. And if you would also leave a review, that would be crazy helpful because the algorithm sees the activity that's happening in a podcast and helps it grow because of those types of things. Now, leaving a review is super easy. All that you have to do is scroll down on whatever platform you're using and you'll find a little space where there's empty stars and you can put however many stars you think that the podcast deserves and then you can click on write a review and you can do it right exactly in the same spot where you're listening to the podcast. I would appreciate that so much. And don't forget to subscribe. That's a little tiny white plus sign on Apple Podcasts. I'm not sure on other platforms. But it's a tiny, tiny little plus sign. And you can subscribe and continue to get the mindset and encouragement that will help you get through your day. And one more thing. If you want to support this podcast in moving forward, and you're on Amazon anyway, buying I don't know everything in your life from things for Christmas that's coming up or Halloween costumes all of this holiday stuff coming to toilet paper hey if you could just do it through my link then I get a kickback so when you shop instead of typing in just amazon.com it's as easy and as simple as typing in amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash my friend Misha and if you just type that in each time you go to Amazon to shop, then I'll get a kickback. And I would appreciate that so much. And hey, thank you for letting me walk through a small part of your journey with you today. And remember that other people really do live up to the beliefs that we have about them in so many ways, especially when they're impressionable. Let those words sink in and carry with you through your week. Until next time, my friends. Bye.